Hey everybody, everybody, this is Jesse from Presley and thanks so much um, and welcome to our PR roundtable. Thanks so much for joining us and it's something I'm very excited to get started because it's something pretty close to our heart, namely um, it's building a remote team. Um, and I've got some amazing guests with me, but before we actually um, go there, I want to especially thank you guys for all joining um, and taking the time, hopefully safe and from your home office to actually join us. So I want to make sure and say to you that the chat is open. Um, um, I think most of you are in urgent need of some socializing and networking. So do feel free to open up that window in the chat. And just to make sure everything works, I want to pose a question to every single one of you. And that is like rate the past few weeks in craziness from zero to 10. So <laughs> if it was actually pretty quiet, should you give it a two? If it was as crazy as hell, you give it a 10. So you get the point. And we'll see kind of the points come in um, and we can kind of go there. Oh, I already see like a 10 and a nine coming in. So that is promising for what's to come today. So now um, my guests and um, I first want uh, to introduce Sigrid, who is from a spokesperson from um, one of the best universities in the world, the University of Leuven. And Jasper, who is CEO from a PR agency, another company which has offices across across South America. So I'll start with you, Sigrid. If I would ask the question from one to 10 um, to <laughs> you, what would be your answer? Um, I would say definitely 10. Um, we had some crises before, but this is a, is a big one. Um, and it's also been a few weeks now. So yeah, a 10 for me at this point. Yeah, not only have you guys switched from being like a, as an organization, like pretty much like go to class in a classroom to fully remote, mm -hmm. your team actually started working from home. But at the same time, like the PR load probably like doubled because you have a few professors who are kind of linked with like the efforts against the virus in Belgium. Mm -hmm, that's true. Um, so we started working from home, but at the same time, the work, I think, tripled something like that in the beginning. And now it's it's, it's a lot each day. Um, but uh, luckily, we are not alone. So we're a team of seven people uh, at the present policy communications office. Um, but we do have a lot of com colleagues working on marketing and stuff like that. So we're not alone. But it's uh, it's been quite a challenge in the past few weeks. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. And let's then like ask that same question to Jasper. Basically, you have like a team which is pretty large, PR agency of 150 people how the hell have you actually managed to get them like switch to working from home i mean this I mean, the switch wasn't necessarily the most complicated part of it i mean we'd, mm -hmm. we'd seen trouble coming I mean, we we'd had big client affectations since the beginning of january from our asian clients and then our european clients and you know, the trickle down effect was very apparent um I, we we're definitely in a 10 and we're definitely still in a 10 in terms of the drama i mean yeah, there's the transition that we need to make for our operation, but then there's the transition that we've had to make for close to you know, 130 clients as well, moving from mm. their traditional comms plans to crisis, a lot of internal communications and, and, and firefighting in general. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and was that kind of the hardest part of, 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 of fixing it, like, like getting that communication line between like your teams and the clients, keeping that going? Or well, were there other it, kind of more challenging? No, I mean, it's, you know, it's the parallel work. You no, know, it's, it's one eye looking inside and the other eye looking outside. Um, mm -hmm. The inside bit, um, we, were, we were fairly well set up. I mean, we'd started home office for 30% of the office any one day since about two years ago. So that transition mm -hmm. wasn't too complicated. And normally from a client side, you know, there'll be a lot of PR professionals here in an agency. You'll expect one or two crises happening at any one time, what you don't expect is having your entire portfolio of clients on multiple themes at the same time. And that is honestly where, you know, if we look at if we look at the spike of you know, allotment of time and effort that we're putting into our clients, I mean, literally, it went from, you know, eight, nine hour days to probably 16, 17, 18 hour days. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And did, do you feel that the, the like all of a sudden also working from home kind of made that harder making that switch to full along crisis comes? And um, in a certain way, yes, I mean, there's a certain sort of beguiling thing about the home office. I mean, we sort of, you have this idea that when you're not doing it yourself all the time, you have an idea that maybe 
maybe not as efficient, but then suddenly when you're well in the thick of it and not just for a Friday or a Monday, doing it five days a week, we're, we're now on day 24, I think, of our, of our mm -hmm. office lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, and the amount of output that we actually get done is enormous. I mean, I would, I would definitely say we're 50 to 100% up on output in general. Okay, so you're cancelling all offices. <laughs> Well, <laughs> it, it's, been, it's, it's been a serious consideration. I mean, we've been cool. fans of the wonderful office for a long time. But. Yeah, yeah, cool. Cool, Sigrid, how, how was that like? Because basically you went through the same, right? Like all of a sudden you got work from home, but you mm -hmm. needed the crisis to deal with and, and all that extended workload. Mm -hmm. what, was that like combination of those two big switches the, the hardest part? Like, like, like you, you feel that... that, that that rings a bell, what Jasper's saying? Yeah, definitely. So um, I, on one hand, you have to um, keep your team up and running more than ever. Um, at the same time, you have the, the whole home office thing going on yourself, um, mm -hmm. which is um, quite a switch because we used to work from home from time to time, but not all the time. So it's it's really a different setting for me. Um, but looking back, I think we made the switch quite easily because we did uh, already work with, with some cloud-based tools and stuff like that. So, um, so it, it it works, but it's it's quite, it's not only a physical change, it's also a mental change. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, oh. and how, how, how are you dealing with that? Like, like it's because it, like for us, like if I like, that's always been the hardest part. We've been remote for the past five years and still like getting that cultural, I don't know how, how to kind of describe it, that magic going mm -hmm. still is something that, 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 it, that, that is, that is a challenge. Is, is that something that, that, that you guys feel as well, that, that that's kind of the thing that, that makes this the hardest? Um, maybe not a hard, but it is a, a, a quite a hard part. Um, we try to keep our uh, daily structure. Um, we organize our daily stand-up mm -hmm. meeting at uh, half past ten, uh, half past mm -hmm. nine every morning. So mm -hmm. we do it uh, uh, through Skype for business now. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a, a larger meeting once a week um, to keep uh, an overview of the planning, um, see what's going on, what needs to be done. Um, mm -hmm. um, and I think it's really important to keep the structure um, going. Um, um, to have that as a kind of base um, for your mm. team. Um, I do miss the, the the talks at the coffee machine because you mm -hmm. do not get the same vibe through no. uh, phone calls and stuff like that. Um, mm. So th yes, a, that is something I really do miss. Um, mm. Mm. So, so something that that we've done uh, just to, just as a little bit um, like we've tried multiple things to kind of like like change this a little bit. But the thing that we found most is that when you, for example do an event through live stream or through kind of like webinar just for fun right mm -hmm. and sometimes we do it we have actually have a channel in slack which we call water cooler so mm -hmm. whenever someone joins that zoom it kind of pings and everyone can kind of join and sometimes like we pay pictionary in there which is kind of mm -hmm. nice right but the other thing that we've kind of said um, was that it's perfectly fine to every time you have a zoom call to start it with 10 minutes of chit chat right <laughs> so that you just have like like you just take some time for it because otherwise you would do it anyway in the hallway or like at the coffee machine and and having that kind of like making a little bit of time of that for that for every meeting like it happens anyway but but also telling the people that it's fine to do that is kind of something which, which does um like work you still need to keep at it because if you're busy you kind of sometimes say like okay let's just dive in directly but for us this is kind of something just allowing our people to, 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 to have every meeting and, and, and take some time for that is actually something that, that we found um, um, useful. Um, Jasper, do you have any of these kind of um, like tricks up your sleeve that you've been kind of using to get that cultural glue going between the team? Yeah, and, uh, the big one, and this is something that I've been harping on about since about the middle of last year. Um, and we have cross-cultural teams. So we have our offices. One sec, guys. <laughs> it's perfectly fine, Jasper. We're all working from home. We all know how it is, so no worries. Um, so just, uh, train of thought completely lost there. Um, so the, the, the big one for us, and this is something that's is difficult with cross-cultural teams. I mean, we have offices across the whole of, the whole of Latin America. Um, and everyone presumes that, you know, Everyone speaks Spanish, everyone has yeah, the same cultures, et cetera, et cetera. And it's not like that. I mean, it's just as like as though you're in Europe. So one thing we've worked on hard is we completely banned phone calls. It all has to be video calls internally. 
Um, and it's something that's been super key for us because you know when you have when you have large teams, it's really important to see what's actually happening with those people. Um, and you can't, and it's very hard to judge over a phone call what, what the state of your employees are or your team mm -hmm. members are. From from a video standpoint, at least we can tell what they look like, what they you know what they feel like. We can see their expressions. And then there's a whole operational side of this. You know, the language is you know, the Spanish changes between countries. Our clients speak English. So Korean is their first language. I mean, we have to have that visual contact. Otherwise, mm -hmm. there's so there's such an opening for misinterpretation in these situations. Everybody is stressed. Mm -hmm. Everyone's absorbing the stress from their clients, absorbing the stress from their teams. You know, we need to have that eye contact um, as much as we possibly can. And that honestly has managed, you know, has allowed us to you know, identify where problems were happening or where people were upset or people were, were, mm -hmm. were frightened. And then we, you know, the appropriate management or teams or, or talent can, can step in and help and see what, and see what those people need to, to be able to survive this time, no? Yep. It's fine that you, for us that have families, we have a network at home, but if you, you're just coming into the industry, you've just moved into the city, you're living on your own, it's a very, very, very tough time. Mm, absolutely. We actually have the same rule, like put your webcam on, right? Because we do calls always through Zoom, right? So, so or, or like, uh, but, but that's the rule. Because even if you have like, I don't know, like you had like a bad sleep because you're like you, your child was awake at night. That's fine because if you come into the office, people would kind of see that you have like a, a very bad day anyway, right? So I think it's 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 kind of a, a fun and 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 fun as well, but also kind of useful to be able to see which kind of the setting that people are are kind of working in. Um, so yeah, I think I think I think it makes a lot of sense to to kind of try and mimic it as much as possible. Um, so yeah, that's been um, something that we've been doing as well. Um, like Sigrid, you told me like earlier when we were kind of mailing that you were kind of really proud on, on how the team kind of managed all mm -hmm. of this. Can you kind of explain a little bit more why you're, why you're so proud on, on, on them? Um, well, I think it's not, it it's not an easy situation, not for anyone. Um, mm. And as you said, we had to switch to working from home um, together with a, a big amount of workload um, happening at the same time. Um, still, everyone, every member of, our, of my team stepped up mm. and, and lived up to any expectation we had. So um, yeah, I think all went well when looking back now, um, although it was sometimes really stressful, really, really difficult because you're not sitting in the same room anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot shout at each other, you do this, you do that. No, you have to, you have to use all these different tools at the same time. Um, mm. So we had like Slack, we had Skype for business, we had the mails, we had the telephones, it was everything at the same time and it still is. So, um, but we manage um, and we were a small yeah. team uh, for quite a, a large university. So, um, mm. but as I said, we're not the only one. We have a, a lot of other um, people and departments working very hard to make this work. So, yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Really cool. Good. Um, like one of the things that, that basically I really like miss most of, like and still after all those years um, is that um, that you can, for example, on a Friday afternoon or, or and just on a Thursday, like you can go out for lunch or you can just take a walk or you can go drink something um, like after work. That's kind of the thing that, that, that I miss most. And, and for us, it was always like a conscious decision to build a remote team, but still like you, you cannot ever kind of re replace that. What are these things um, like, like for you, Jasper? Um, like, because you, you've been working with people remote or because you have like a team in, in, in this part of South America and so on, which are like, if you could kind of wish one thing like that, that you could still have in this remote setup, what, what would that be? Hmm. I, we, we, we spend a lot of time moving our management between the countries. Mm -hmm. So pulling up the, the country leads from Chile, bring them into the Mexican office. I mean, that, that contact mm. is, is key. I mean, in some of our markets, our agencies are also very new. So, it's super important having them just un just come and feel that you know, if we have a satellite office that's maybe four people, they need mm. to understand that this is supported by the you know, the 150 strong team in Mexico City, and, they, and it's hard mm. for them to understand that on in these situations without having that freedom of movement. Honestly, mm. I mean, mm. and, that's, and I you know, being able to you know, get on a plane, go to Colombia, see our clients in Colombia, sort out situations, talk with the team, realign. I mean, that kind of 
that just freedom being able to get up and move is is, is honestly what's causing me the most, the biggest mm. amount of stress. Mm -hmm. um, but again, we just have to deal with it. Yeah, yeah. So so for you, it's now that you know, like, I can't be able to kind of catch up or fly people in in the next couple of months, which is probably kind of safe to say. And that's something that we've kind of said as well, like no people coming in over the next couple of months, because like we all know it's going to, um, um, like not going to be safe at least for those people to travel. Is that the thing that you kind of like bothers you most about this whole situation? That question directed to me. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah no, completely. I mean, it's, it's, it's that kind of, you know, the, the, the limiting sense that you have of, of not being able to spread one's wings of not being able to feel as regional as you were before, because now it's all, you know, the whole process is digitalized. Mm -hmm. um, I think yeah, it does. It does cause me stress. I mean, yeah. but I mean, at the end of the day, we're just going to have to deal with it and we'll get over it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And Sigrid, like same question for you. Like, like what's the thing that you kind of miss most? You touched briefly upon it, like the water cooler conversation <laughs> and so on. But if you kind of could like from, I, I don't know, like in two weeks, you can bring one thing back because we're probably going to slowly kind of ease into like get into the office anyway. What, mm -hmm. what would that be? Um, I think still I would put uh, the, the, the human contact, uh, the live contact on, on the first place. Um, something mm -hmm. that I would also would like to be able to do is to, um, well, we also put a lot of things on hold. Um, we also have a lot of projects that we're not doing anymore at this time, which is quite logical, but still, um, I think we are all looking forward to doing other stuff besides the current Corona project stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Just that. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine that, yes. that, that. That's yeah, and I think that like like what we've been kind of doing is that we've said like, listen, we've got to build this remote team, but we can only do this with if we regularly kind of meet those people in person as well. Mm -hmm. So normally we kind of we'd have one team retreat, have everyone together like once a year, and then two other times that different teams actually come over and, and kind of visit our HQ. That's kind of kind of the rhythm that we that we kind of felt was good for us because it kind of is is useful that you. For me, at least personally, kind of useful to meet people in person to actually build some kind of connection, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and and that's something that 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 we've been um, like like trying, and and it's it's great, but still, it's also sometimes we feel like a big ask, right? Like mm -hmm. because like people you work with have kind of families. Oftentimes, we 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 think it's only useful to fly them in for a whole week or something. Like you you take them away for a whole week, so so that kind of poses other kind of challenges. From a from a management perspective, that you do ask a lot. Uh, most of the staff actually don't mind um, because they, they love to kind of be out and about. But but <laughs> but it is something that 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 is kind of keeping us uh, like busy. So so now what we've kind of changed a little bit is that we during even during interviews when we're just hiring people, we're really upfront with it, right? Like we basically make it part of the deal. Like listen. Are you fine with like traveling like three times a year? And that and that's something that 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 does does help us a little bit because then people are also very much aware that they are signing up for something uh, like that. And I think for you, Sigrid, it's a little bit different because mm -hmm. it, like I think most of your team kind of is not that far uh, <laughs> from, from each other, which sometimes mm -hmm. probably like can can maybe be challenging, like, because if you have like some people kind of working from home and kind of a core group always mm -hmm. coming into the office, have, have you already kind of thought about how to return to the normal? Like, like <laughs> Well, uh, uh, yeah, so, so slowly I'm thinking when we will get back to the office, how will, we, how will it be? I think we will um, maybe work from home a little bit more than before. I'm not quite sure about that because mm -hmm. um, it's not always that easy with our kind of job. Um, for us, it's also important to have a lot of contact with um, with our with other staff, with students, um, but also with journalists. So um, I still think it will be really necessary for us to actually be in the office. But still, mm. I it's quite positive for me to see that we get a lot of things done um, on in this situation um, using um, certain tools. So um, mm. it's not like we've been less productive or anything like that, not at all. So that's yeah. really a, quite a positive side of, of all mm -hmm. of this. 
Were you worried about that? Because that was kind of like one of my questions as well, like that you feel that this, this is hurting productivity, like, or, or in, on the contrary? Um, I wasn't worried about productivity. I was a little bit worried about how to get things done um, mm. on a daily basis um, to keep everything organized, to keep people motivated. I think that's really also very important for me to keep um, mm -hmm. my team motivated um, because I do realize they have a life at home. Um, we're all sitting at home. Uh, a lot of them also with little children, which is not always that easy. So um, that is, is, is quite a big worry for me. Is everyone keeping up? Is everyone still um, up and running? Stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I wasn't really worried about productivity because we we had small crises in a similar situation, um, coordinating, coordinating from different places around Leuven, but also from in Belgium, out Belgium. And it, it, it works. So I wasn't worried mm -hmm. about the productivity. Cool. Cool, good. Uh, like Jasper, you you touched upon this as well a little bit earlier on, like like productivity that you kind of like see that it's actually like like better now, like or or or, or like less well, or similar. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's necessarily better. I mean, mm -hmm. there's some there's some things which are are difficult to run remotely. I mean, running mm -hmm. design teams remotely, running um, creative teams remotely when we've got sort of big creative issues to get out quickly. I mean, it is tricky. The PR yes. comm side of our business, we're seeing that we can run it remotely, and um, you know, it's going to hard to get me to get me to go back to the mega office spaces. Mm -hmm. um, I will definitely look at changing changing the format, the way that we work around the country, because mm -hmm. we've had a lot of insights. And I mean, we, we had insights for a month. We'll see what it's like after three months. Yeah. Um, but there's definite there's definite upside. Yeah, yeah, uh, but of course, probably like. Like what we've of course seen, and we've been kind of remote like all along, so we can't really compare how it would be all all in the same office. But of course, like whatever is going on is impacting people. It's not like really kind of necessarily linked to working remote. It's just kind of because we've got staff members living in the city center of Madrid, which got hit pretty hard. Of course, they're gonna be they need they will need to make arrangements of of stuff going on so so that's kind of like the, the thing that that we of course have seen and the team has been brilliant dealing with this um, and of course we kind of like nothing really changed in how we kind of set up processes but that was like of course for us why some things were different because all of a sudden like your kids are at home right so you're be you're going to be a little bit less productive at least throughout the day uh, so so i can i kind of like 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 expected a little bit um of of that um like is is have, have you tried out Jasper, for you those questions like something a little bit more um out there through remote like for example like some fun sessions through zoom or like like something which is more like at all hands, company high hands, like like those things. Have you kind of done mm -hmm. these things? We done, yeah, we. I mean, you know, Google very kindly opened up everyone's Gmail mm -hmm. to be so you know, sort of the top level. So we immediately took a bunch of that and sort of ended all hands. You know, about two hundred and ten people, I think, on the call. Cool. Um, cool. Which was which went so much better than I thought it was going to be a technology disaster, but honestly, it was pretty smooth. Um, and it was good. I mean, it's quite hard doing a lot of those sorts of meetings. I mean, you're taking a lot mm. of time out, but we are, in, you know, the teams, our, our agency is split by business units and, and sectors. So mm. each one of those leaders has those touch points every morning. Um, you know, general chit chat sessions. There's, a, there's, a, there's a, then a series of whole much more serious ones. You know, what the president, mm. what the press conference by the presidents were in each one of the countries that we operate, which obviously leads to a whole different set of steps that we have to take every day. Yeah, yeah, and like, like, what about like? Do, do you sometimes meet the whole comp, bring them together in real life as well? Or, yeah, or... well, we do. We do town halls, and what we haven't managed to do is move every single one of our employees from every one of the other countries no. up to Mexico. But we've always brought, we always bring the leadership up if we have an all hands. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, yeah, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I think it's kind of, kind of similar. Like, and then, um, like moving on a little bit, and we've of course kind of touched upon um, like tools. Of course, um, like earlier when we kind of were, were doing the introduction, um, I think I heard like of course communication tools. Like, how do you video conference call? Like, do these kind of things? Is it Hangout, Zoom, whatever? And then of course. Probably like like a project management tool is 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 pretty kind of like important um, over there as well. Um, but like 
is, are there any kind of guidelines you set out for video calls? I know, yeah, Jasper, you similar to, to Presley have like put video on like all the time. Um, like we have kind of like it's fine to chit chat for the first kind of 10 minutes during any call. Is there anything, any, any, because I think mainly like people kind of tuning in is, is that's what they're kind of now. Like if they're new into this whole remote thing, that's kind of like what they are looking for. So any kind of tips you have, have for people there, Jasper? Yeah, I, I think yeah, clarity and frankness is super important. Mm. Um, and it's something that's not necessarily that easy for everybody. So we often no. talk about, you know, let's be clear and to the point what it, what we want to achieve in this. I, you know, a couple of your classic pointers, you set, establish what the objectives are before every meeting kicks off. The chit chat mm. is great. And, and I think from a management or a leader's point of view, you really do have to spend those first 10 minutes asking questions to make sure that everybody there is okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what is you know, the act, the state of, um, how do you say it in English? Um, sort of what's, what's the general ambience of everybody there? Yes. And, and, and it, you know, even quick games of, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how are you today? Because mm -hmm. it's just, I mean, that reflects so much in the responses that come back from everybody. If mm -hmm. you know that somebody's having a bad day, then their response is maybe you're going to come back differently to when they were having a good day, and then at least you can you can allow for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. You know, as, as these sort of things filter down through the teams, I know they become much more you know, much more light and and, mm. and 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 probably more fun. But from a, from my perspective, it's you're trying to set those bases so that everybody else can yeah. follow by example. Yeah, absolutely makes sense. And and Sigrid, is there anything that kind of you learned like the past few weeks that you think, oh, this is actually interesting to take with us in in like next meetings or make kind of a, a general guideline out of it? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, yeah. Or is it just for you? Maybe it's just like running, 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 uh, and getting. It has it. been a lot of running um, yeah. from <laughs> around the clock. Um, so uh, at this point, from I think since this weekend, things have slowed down a little bit. So um, mm -hmm. um, so now I'm starting to to overview everything and then to to take home some lessons with me to to say um but at this point um i do feel what jasper says um uh, make sure that there is enough room for chit chat um we try to ask each other regularly uh every on a daily basis how are you doing how are you feeling mm -hmm. is everything okay um mm -hmm. So I think that is really important to to keep your eye on that. Um, we also we use Slack, and at the end of each day, um, I officially say I now close the office for today. So um, <laughs> or I try one. to because yeah. uh, sometimes I have to reopen the office all of a sudden <laughs> later that evening. But still, for me, that's quite important just to to give the signal. So it's okay yeah. for you to just um, shut down and and go and enjoy your time off or something like that. So. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it makes sense because in essence, like what we often also found, and this is morely throughout the years, is that Slack can be a distraction as well. Like mm -hmm. especially for people who kind of are programming or needing to write like a piece, like then it's kind of like an additional WhatsApp messenger that's constantly mm -hmm. pinging you, right? Is, is, do you already, so we have something which we call Slack etiquettes, right? Which is kind of where like people, we say for it's okay to go and do not disturb, or it's mm -hmm. it's it's not okay to just add channel everyone all the time because then everyone's constantly getting those pings, which are so. Is it something that you already notice, or, or you feel that it's it's still kind of okay because maybe the team is small, or you're just starting? Um, no, we we've noticed before. Um, we used to be a bigger team, so uh, at that point we already realized that um, Slack had his bad sides also, um, mm -hmm. but. Um, I, we don't have general rules yet because we try to keep it down a bit, but still it's not yes. easy. Um, mm -hmm. But um, we did agree that if you need someone, just tag them really. Don't expect everyone to read every single message uh, in Slack because that's not, no, not that, that's not possible. So, no, um, I, I understand. I'm, I'm going to set the same question to, to Jasper as well because like, your team is a little bit bigger and you just started with Slack, right? Do you have any kind of negative side effects that you've kind of noticed already? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we'd, we'd, we'd been nearly 10 years, I think, with Hangouts. So I mean, we'd come across a lot of the problems that were based on Hangouts. And so we moved to Slack. We did set a, li a, a slight framework of mm -hmm. what we thought were good ideas and what we weren't thought were weren't good ideas. And mm -hmm. then someone from Slack ran me up and told me that was all wrong. Um, <laughs> and kind of reestablish what those rules should be. And it seems, honestly, it seems to be working. I mean, you know, 
nearly every single channel in the agency is open for somebody to go in. I mean, there's a couple of crisis committees that, that we keep as private. You know, mm -hmm. people can search, they can go and see the conversations, they can see what's happening. I mean, we want them, to, especially while we're remote, we want people to see what we're like as, as business unit yes. leaders or as leaders in the agency. So we don't really yes. want to hide anything yet from everybody. And also when you're in a situation where you don't have that run into someone in the corridor and they can ask you a question, where hopefully they can use start using you know, the Slack as a, literally as a knowledge base. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, it's honestly, Slack has been hugely important to us. Um, there is a downside. It can be super distracting. I, mean, mm. I once every couple of days I have to go through and just filter out the channels that I just don't want. I don't need to see mm -hmm. um, because otherwise you end up in. You know, there's a proverb that I'm not going to say on live stream, but there's you know, the bad floats up to the top. Um, mm. And you know when you're open, when you're ex exposed to so many channels and so many conversations, it can be slightly mm. unnerving. Yeah. But sometimes you feel as a business leader that you need to kind of do that, but it kind of just drives well, you nuts, I, right? And there was a, I saw a comment flash up in the chats. I mean, you have to be super careful to not micromanage everything. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's true. You know, and yeah. it's really tempting to, it's, and Slack makes it very tempting to step yes. in. Yes. Um, so, you know, I personally, I'm very conscious about that. I'll mm -hmm. normally pick a client or I'll pick a team and I'll join in on the conversation on that team for a couple of days and then I'll mm -hmm. step out. But I can't, yeah. I won't do it on multiple clients and multiple teams and multiple sites at the same time. Because, I mean, honestly, then I'm just suddenly not available for anybody to have a conversation or anyone to call me mm. up or anyone to get advice or anybody to you know, air their, air the situation that they're in at the moment. Yeah, yeah and, and I think... Yeah, absolutely. And, and for us, for us, it, I, I was really bad at that in the beginning, to be honest, right? I really had, like, my co-founder can say, like, Jesse, chill the out <laughs> let's just let them because he's his strategy is more like let, I'm, I'm not going to reply directly right i'm just gonna hold off and maybe they figure it out themselves right and and and, and i'm like kind of more of the, the presence i need that kind of presence to 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 so so for me it sometimes is is is, is it still is a struggle to not be or, or want to be read every single message what's going on right you can easily do that but that just kind of fills up your time so much. And, and then you have all those automatic integrations coming in, kind of pinging you from all mm. and uh, like we've got kind of new new but, links coming in and, and support and so on. Yeah, I mean, but, that, but that bit I think is why Slack beats any of the other platforms, honestly. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, so you know, if your new business is HubSpot or, or whatever it is, I mean, just having all that integrate into one place means that you suddenly don't have mm. 20 tabs open on, on our computers, which, it's fine when you're in the office with the mega internet and everything else, but as soon as you send everybody home, you know, it's suddenly you realize the value of having gigabit ethernet in your offices and things like that mm. when you're trying mm. to run so many programs at the same time. And we're, we are pretty software heavy. Um, mm. I mean, we, we found you guys because we're perpetually looking for who's the next, the next mm. thing in, in software to help our agency. So you know, mm. apart from yeah. you, we have, you know, there's Slack. There's Monday. Our whole ERP is cloud-based, um, mm. which it wasn't. I mean, five years ago, we were still using an ERP that I had made. Um, mm. But then we managed to move to another one called Accountability. And, and honestly, that's meant that our finance department has, has managed to carry on functioning, yeah, even absolutely. though they're in home office in, in most of our countries, which are enormously bureau bureaucratic and paper-based. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think that's, I think that's the biggest pain point for, like, like organization and i think sigurd you guys luckily also as an organization made the mm -hmm. switch to be able to work from home um like a, a few years ago already yes. i think right mm -hmm. so probably helped you immensely during these past few weeks to actually because like if some people even have their vpn locked right so they can't mm -hmm. even access their email box from from home that's mm -hmm. that's a reality for lots of people i sometimes get out of offices from people like listen i cannot answer to this email please send to my <laughs> email instead because i'm not i can't work which is for me like how is this on earth possible mm -hmm. but this probably kind of give you kind of a head start uh already Absolutely. That, that, that these tools mm -hmm. were already almost available for you to use yes uh, the university des decided uh, to put a lot of uh, effort in going digital a few years ago um so for online education but also for teleworking from home so um we did have a a very good head start as you call it um 
and in that way, the switch went quite smoothly. Um, I didn't actually had any technical difficulties setting up my home office. Um, it was already set up. Um, so um, yeah, that was really, really good. We had a very good base and that's why it was um, for us quite logical to make the switch uh, to uh, only online education um, and to work from home as much as possible. Cool, good. Ah, this was awesome. Uh, thanks already. Um, there are some questions that came in uh, from um, the people listening. So I'll just kind of go through them and, and, and then we'll, we'll kind of go a little bit deeper into those. But it would be interesting to get like what they ask as well. So I think this one is for Jasper, so someone working in a PR agency. We are struggling to continue to work on our contracts and to continue working full time. How come you are having so much more work? Is it mostly crisis communication due to COVID-19? Do you push this with your clients or did they come to you for this? So I think it's, it's, it's one for you, Jasper. Yeah, I, I don't, don't be mistaken. I and mean, we, we've had certain business units in our, in our agencies that have been catastrophically hit. I mean, our, mm. you know, principally production teams, um, there is zero, literally zero production. Uh, our tourism offices, so we, we look after multiple states in the US, multiple cities, multiple airports, um, dozens of hotels. You know, that was a department or office that went, you know, that literally went from you know, 100% to zero in, in, in the space of five days. Mm. Um, but there are other, other sectors that have a, do have an uptick. Um, all of our digital services, there was very little change there. I mean, maybe there was less advertising spends that we were running, but at the end of the day, the, you know, the service on digital strategy, the service on content, et cetera, that didn't change. There was a lot of stress put us on, onto the content teams because suddenly we didn't have the photo studios and suddenly we didn't, I mean, a whole collection of things. Mm. Um, with other sectors, I mean, our fashion retail sector, I mean, obviously there's no retail at the moment, but there's a lot of e-com in our, in our region. So we had to do a massive pivot, again, for a large amount of clients at the same time to change what we were communicating and how we were communicating. Um, now, at the very beginning, I mean, obviously there's a lot of, you know, a lot of the brands were, you know, how can we, you know, how can we set ourselves apart in this? What, what can we do? So we, we had to do a lot of thinking as how, you know, finding the causes that each one of our clients wanted to support. I mean, there was a lot of trickle down from global brands that had a global directive and wanted to support something specific globally. So we'd look how we could, we could pull that into Mexico or Colombia or Chile or wherever. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are a lot of local brands where, you know, what can we do? How can we support, you know, what can we do with our factories? What can we, so, you know, to help, help guide them in terms of you know, what was good, what was a strong cause without being seen to be taking advantage of the situation. And some mm. of them, you know, we, we did find causes and we didn't, Push this into PR. We didn't. We didn't um, expose it as such. We just left it there. Something that some, you know, the employees can talk about later. Mm. So one thing we did see is that, in the same way that it was, you know, we all had complications in moving our entire operations to home office. So did all of our clients. Mm. You know, so suddenly, you know, clients that had underdeveloped internal communications programs, etc., suddenly essentially needed that, and incredibly quickly. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the work we found ourselves doing for ourselves internally of how we were going to better communicate said was we would pass that information straight on to our clients because they also needed to have that, that, that sort of framework. Mm -hmm. And uh, like Sigrid, same for you, probably some, how you kind of communicate internally with, mm -hmm. with your internal stakeholders and who want you to kind of get the news out. Like mm -hmm. how was kind of like, how did you make that switch? What would like used to come into the office uh, mm -hmm. in, in your HQ in, in University of Lovo mm -hmm. and now like, like did you kind of set something up for? for or, um, how, at this point, a lot, a lot of, of uh, phone calls, video calls, video mm -hmm. conferences, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> almost each day, every, all day long. Um, we used to, to go to people, uh, do interviews, talk about research, um, about policy. So, yeah, that has changed. Uh, that human contact has, has been replaced by, by phone calls, um, mm. but we still managed to find each other um, quite easily. Um, so at that point, yeah, it, it works, but still also there, I do miss um, just being together in a room discussing certain stuff. Um, yeah. 
the more so, creative uh, like the more creative mm -hmm. thing that that's kind of like like mm -hmm. where you're bouncing yeah. off ideas that's that's the more difficult if you're kind of yes. not yes. in the same room and interviewing someone um through a phone call is very different than doing mm. it in real life you don't get to see mm. any a lot of emotion or you don't yeah you yeah. miss certain things um yeah and and the same talking to journalists we did talk a lot on the phone but sometimes you you did get to meet each other and that's yeah that's mostly gone you don't get to see anyone anymore so um mm. um we also had the the idea of organizing an online press conference a, a few mm -hmm. weeks ago mm -hmm. um it actually didn't want didn't go through but um still that's one of the things we are looking into for the, the near future maybe um but mm -hmm. that's also a new challenge for us because we used to just invite the camera teams around show yeah. them uh, everything went quite smoothly quite well and now you have the extra challenge that well yeah. they, they can come around and, and and do some recording but still as yeah we don't encourage them um, no. but probably you need to then for example foresee i don't know more normally those cameramen like take some back shots or some mm -hmm. kind of of the buildings which are so nice mm -hmm. like so maybe like now you'll probably also be tasked to kind of deliver those materials so they can kind of make a montage mm -hmm. out of it or I don't know yes. or, or, well, or start with kind of sharing pre-recorded interviews and mm -hmm. these kind of things. Yes, we're lucky we have a very good audiovisual department. Um, so we did make, um, we did some 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 little films, little movies with our, our rector already. Um, mm -hmm. So, and that really helps. That's also really useful to have a, a really mm. good audiovisual department, to have a very uh, good IT department. Um, so yeah, that made the switch quite, well, a lot easier for us, but still, uh, it's still quite challenging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a question coming in on top of that, like, um, do you have advice on which tools for online press conferences work well? Right? <laughs> oh, like, oh, like press conferences, like I think webinar software, mm -hmm. like is, is, is kind of close to um, what people need, um, I guess. We've been using Zoom before, which was really well, quality was good, but their webinar feature in itself was a little bit like, I think was a little bit more difficult, mainly how they needed to subscribe and emails like that. This Livestorm is a little bit more polished, but not sure if you use something already, Sigrid? Not yet, not yet. We were no. looking into something, but um, I have to be honest, I'm not really uh, big on the no. technical side of that. So, no, no. Uh, but I can I can uh, ask around and no, no, maybe give some fine. tips. Yes, of Yeah, course. absolutely. Jasper, you have um, done online press conferences with the team? No, no we, we haven't done, I mean, we've done present product presentations through Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, I quite like the look of Livestorm. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it feels was, slick. Yeah, yeah. And the, the people don't need to install anything either, which makes it a little bit easier, uh, I guess. Good. Some advice, which is, I'll I'll start with you on that, Jasper, which is a big one, not really re related to um, um, the the um, uh, um, remote work. But can you give some advice on what to communicate and what not to communicate these days? What types of communication do you pause, and what kinds of communication or subject do you push on? Uh, I think, Jasper, you get that question every single day these days. <laughs> um, I mean, it depends. I mean, it for, I mean, externally depends completely on the stakeholders, industry, and everything else. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, internally, what are we pushing? Success. You know, what are we doing well? What's happening well? We're not dwelling mm -hmm. on bad news. We're not dwelling on bad news because it doesn't help the motivation. Um, so we need to make sure things go well. Everybody knows that things went well. Things went mm -hmm. badly. Let's talk about it within the team, but let's not let's, let's not take this across the entire agency. Mm -hmm. um, and that helps people, I think, understand better why, you know, what we're still doing, what we're still doing well, you know, where where people can look for for inspiration of new new creative ideas that are going to help their clients. Mm -hmm. Because you know, there was a phase where it was a lot of bad news from a lot of clients. So yeah, you, know, you need to concentrate yeah. on that on the upside there. And I think that helps people working from home in general, because that's, you know, I saw a comment flash up here. Um, I think it's easy for people to become, you know, when they don't have so much connection to the, to the main office, they don't have so much visual contact, they don't have the camaraderie that you'd find in the meeting rooms. Mm -hmm. It turns into a very robotic process to work. Let's mm. just deliver it, let's just deliver, let's deliver. And you know, that's fine for a week or two, but when we're talking about this could happen for, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 weeks. I mean, it's, it's, a, yeah. it's a big watch out. Yeah, I sometimes reread re stuff that I've kind of replied to people on Slack, right? And then it's because you have Slack mobile as well and you're kind of just in the middle of something and you quickly answer, that's never a good idea, right? Because you're just trying to unblock them quickly, but at the same time, 
it sometimes feels that you're really short or like annoyed or uh, without actually wanting to um, like give that. Uh, uh, um, so, so that's something that, that I yeah, found. There's a, I mean, and some things for people that are listening that work on cross-cultural teams, there's an amazing yes. book by, uh, by Erin Mayer. I'll ask Kate to kind of share the link yeah. or put so, it. So put I'll, it I'll in. get the link for you later, which basically talks about you know, when you're working cross cultural teams, how you should understand the cross culture cool. um, and yeah. how you should adjust or enables you to read better people. And it's something that's, I mean, it's helped me enormously. Um, cool. A client many years ago said I had to read it when we were working across. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So, and yeah, that we'll we'll put that in the show notes. Thanks, um, Sigrid. Like, same um, question for you. Is there any non-COVID news going out these days? <laughs> to be honest, like, um, barely. No, no. no. Um, almost none because, um, well, uh, we, on one hand, we um, had to to um, to actually stop all non-essential research uh, for a mm -hmm. while. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, we also have a lot of journalists just looking for only um, COVID-19 news, um, yes. COVID-19 experts all day long. Um, so they actually do tell me we don't have any room for other news. Um, so don't bother us as you speak. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm quite. But actually, that's something that's something mm -hmm. that we hear as well, that like mm -hmm. if you don't put COVID-19 in the title of your press release, <laughs> it's not going to be picked up. Right. Like that. Yeah. What, is yeah. it that bad? Literally? Like, well, um, I had a lot of journalists asking, especially for the COVID-19 uh, news only. Um, mm -hmm. I, I also had some who were actually begging for something else. Um, yeah. So I can I can feel uh, a small change coming, but still, um, I think it's quite logical um, being in this situation. Um, if you if you take a look at the newspapers on the news sites, if you listen to the news, if you look at the news on television, it's only Corona. So yeah, it's mm. It's it's balancing, but I, my, to my feel, there is 